When it comes to the pursuit of excellence, you guys, Muslims, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to be sacrificed, to, to be satisfied with mediocrity. We cannot afford it. You cannot be, you as a believer, as a Muslim, have to push yourself to better. Whatever you're doing. If you're memorizing, you could be memorizing better. If you're studying, you could be studying better. If you're working, you could have been working better. If you're volunteering, you could be volunteering better. Push yourself to better. Push yourself, especially when you're young. Right now you have time, you don't have that much responsibility. But I have homework. Yes, that's not too much responsibility. Responsibility will come once you get married. Once you have children. Right now you're free. Right now you have the freedom you will never ever have in your life. This is the time to push yourself, not sit back and play video games. This is not the time to watch, sit there and watch movie after movie after movie. This is not the time to be excited about the new Avengers or whatever. This is not the time, not for you. You have much bigger things to do. The entire world is waiting on the impact that you will have. You can't sit around. Everybody else can, that's fine. They don't have higher pursuits. You have to be the person of excellence because you're from now thinking about impact. Every single young man and woman in this audience should be thinking about what did Allah give me? What talent did He give me? And what impact will I have on this planet because of it? What am I going to do with it? And as you think about that impact, then you realize what you're really working towards. You're working towards contentment, meeting with Allah. That is our ultimate truth. You want to be able to show Allah that you did everything in your potential. That's what you want to be able to do. You guys should have the best sleeping habits. You guys should have the best dietary habits. You, you guys should have the best exercise schedule. You guys should be the best in your prayers. You guys should be the best in your studies. You should be pushing yourself to excellence in everything you do in life. Everything you do in life should be at the top. You should not be eating junk food. You should not be the people that are just lounging around wasting time. Yes, you should have a good time. But even when you play, you play hard. You play hard. People see you, other kids in school see you, other people in college see you and say, I want to be like him. Everything he does is awesome. Everything he does, he does the best. That's what you people need to be. That's what this ummah needs. People of excellence. And then these people are going to have impact. And you know what? Our parents, unfortunately, because they were never taught this business, they were never taught this ladder. So you know what? Their highest ladder was prestige, maybe above prestige, money. That's where it ended. So the only concern they have for you is prestige and money. Get a job so you can have prestige. So we can say, our, our son has a job. He's a doctor. He's a this, he's a that. And hopefully we can have a lot of money we can show it off. That's it. That's where it ended for them. And that's what they talk to you about all the time. Where are you going to work? How are you going to make money? When are we going to buy a house? Isn't it? Everything ends in prestige and money. But there's so much more in life. What's above money? What was above money? Excellence. Who's going to push you to excellence? Who's going to think about impact? If you, if you and I only think about money and prestige, and it dies there, how many young men and women have gone and become doctors in the Muslim community? And I love picking on doctors because they're so depressed in the Muslim community. They went and became doctors because their mama told them and daddy told them. I would not want to go to you if I have a problem. I would not. I would rather go to someone who became a physician because they love helping humanity. They care. They don't love the next payment coming in from the corrupt insurance company. They actually care about humanity. Those are the physicians I'd like to have a relationship with. Or go to and take my children to, you know? People of impact. And now my final bit in this. Allah says, وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Human beings will have nothing for themselves except the effort that they made, the pursuit that they had. Now let's start again. The pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of cool. The pursuit of popularity. The pursuit of prestige. The pursuit of money. The pursuit of excellence. The pursuit of impact and the pursuit of truth. Yes? You know the most valuable thing to Allah? The most valuable thing to Allah of all of these is pursuit. Not money, not impact, not excellence. All of those things will come. What Allah wants to see from you is what? Pursuit. I told you there are prophets that show in front of Allah on Judgment Day how many followers? Zero. So they had zero impact. But Allah still gives them the highest ranks in Jannah. Why? Because Allah respects their pursuit, their effort, their grit. 
they were tough and they went through it. If you were to have a progress report for Nuh alayhi salam every year, let's see a growth chart in how many people became Muslim. Nuh alayhi salam, so, you know, it's annual review. How many people become Muslim every year? <laughs> 950 years, there's like, bloop. The chart isn't going like this, it's just it's this flat and maybe even goes down, some people were coming close and then <laughs> they went away. There's no impact. There, there is no you know, progress on the ground. But you know what we respect about Nuh is his constant, constant, constant pursuit. We have to internalize this. You guys have to be a people of pursuit. We will have nothing in front of Allah if not our pursuits. Young people, listen to me, what I'm, listen to what I'm saying, please carefully. Please think about this. What is your life going to mean? If your life is just one video game to the next, if your life is just one episode to the next of a show, what are you pursuing? Who cares if you got trophies on that video game or you got 100% synchronization in Assassin's Creed? Who cares? Who cares? What is that in a call? How did, what did that change the, for the world? You know, who cares how many push-ups you can do? Who cares? You have to think more than that. You have to think higher than that. And when you start doing that, I will tell you one thing Allah will give you. Allah will give you happiness. When you really have pursuit, then your life means something. And when your life means something, it makes you happy. When you don't have pursuit, then you never find meaning in your life. And that's why you're never happy. Doesn't matter how, many, how much music you listen to, or how much hanging out you do, or how much partying you do, you're just never happy. You're never satisfied. You're always bored. You're always just, you know, not happy with yourself, etc. It is this pursuit that you have to internalize. You young people have to be people of incredible, incredible, incredible pursuit. Allah says, وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى I love this ayah. And I'm ending with this ayah. And that his effort, his effort, his pursuit will soon be seen. His effort will soon be what? Seen. Let me tell you something. When you show somebody your resume, I graduated from this school. I worked here and here and here. I did this and this and this project. What do you put on your resume? The results or the pursuit? You don't put the pursuit, you put the results. The result was you graduated. You don't put, I worked really hard for the final semester and I was like dying to do this exam. And you don't put that on your resume. You just put, I graduated, yes or no? I did this project, this project, and this project. You don't put on your resume how much effort you made to finish that project, isn't it? And by the way, sometimes you put a lot of effort in and you don't, pay, you don't pass. Does that happen? You put an incredible amount of effort into a project and it fails. Or you don't get the grade that you deserved or you, you wanted. You just didn't see the results. Human beings, we judge each other based on what? Results. I don't care how much effort you made, you didn't get the results. You're fired. I don't care how much effort you made, you didn't pass the test, you're not graduating. You understand? But Allah on Judgment Day is not looking at your report card based on results. Allah is looking at your report card based on what? Effort. Allah says, and His effort, His pursuit is that which will be shown, in Allah, or which will be seen. That is remarkable because no other human being on the face of this earth can see my effort. I cannot see your effort and you cannot see mine. Only Allah sees effort. All we see are imp is impact. All we see are results. We are people of results. Allah is a judge of, of effort. SubhanAllah. What an incredible master. Nobody will appreciate your efforts except Allah. So never underestimate your efforts because other people underestimate them. People didn't appreciate the kind of work you put in and you figure, well, I guess it wasn't worth it. It was to Allah. It was to Allah. It was worth it to Allah. So I, that part of my talk was specifically for the sisters. Because they, they do a lot of effort and they feel like it's not going somewhere anywhere. Not the guys, because guys don't do any effort. And they feel like, I did a lot, I tried so hard. I had. You guys just have to stop lying to yourself. You stop have to telling yourself you're doing enough. You have to stop being lazy. Shaitan is destroying you guys. It's, he's destroying you. You're so lazy. Stop being lazy. Stop rationalizing to yourself. Get up and do work, do more. If you can't find a job, keep going, keep applying, keep applying, keep talking, keep networking. Don't stop and say, I tried everything, it didn't happen. No, you didn't try everything. Keep pushing. This is what you have to learn to do. Learn from your sisters, man.
they're, they're, they're just, you know, uh, hold on, I'm coming after you, hold on. They're not going to be happy after a little while. You know your problem? <laughs> Forget the pursuit of happiness. Your problem is that you're actually always uncertain about yourself. You're always thinking I'm not good enough. Or it didn't count. <laughs> and you have to take it easier on yourself. I'm not talking to you. You don't need to take it easier on yourself. You, should, you take easy enough on yourself already. Mashallah. You, on the other hand, need to chill out. You need to calm down. I have met sisters that are studying Islam, that are studying the Quran, but they don't have all the vocabulary yet. Yes, auntie, relax. You don't have all the vocabulary. It's not the end of the world. Allah is not interested in your results. He is interested in what? Your effort, your effort, your effort. Stop worrying about your results. You worry too much about your results. You worry too much about what you don't already know, what you haven't already accomplished. Stop thinking about accomplishment and start thinking about, uh, you know, sincere, genuine, best possible effort. And then let me tell you, the results from Allah will come and they will come pouring, but they will come on His schedule, not yours. Two people will make exactly the same amount of effort and somebody will see the fruit of their labor right away and somebody else will wait for years before they see anything. And that is in the hands of Allah. Because, and you don't get to say, well, he got so much results. I didn't get any results. We made the same amount of effort. This isn't fair. No, 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 it is entirely fair because that calendar belongs to Allah. And all Allah wanted to see from you was your effort. There are going to be two people that take the same exact test. This happens in my class. They take the same exact test. They, one, of the, one guy works extra hard. Man, this guy studies all night and all day. He was my friend before he came to the program. We were friends together and now I'm his teacher. And I'm telling him, hey man, you wanna go hang out? No, I gotta study. I'm your teacher. No, I gotta study, there's an exam. I'll go easy on you, I'll give you extra credit. Just let's go play, man. Just go play about. No, I have to study. This guy studied day and night, day and night, day and night. I know the effort he made. People don't know, I know the effort he made. But you know what? He's so smart in his career. He's so smart in business. He's most so smart professionally. But Allah did not create him to learn Arabic or something. No matter how much he learned, he could not get a high score. He could not, he barely passed, barely passed every time. And the kid next to him, super genius, laziest bum I've ever met, kid is sleeping in class all day and he gets a 99 every time or a 100. And he used to make me so mad. I want to see that kid get a zero. I do. Like I want to see him get a zero so I can slap him so hard with his paper. And the guy who's killing himself studying is failing the test. And I as a teacher am frustrated. Imagine the student. I as a teacher am frustrated. How come this kid puts no effort in and he gets the results and this guy puts every possible effort in and gets zero results? It seems unfair, but you know what? When both of these people come in front of Allah and they both say, I was learning Arabic for Allah. I was learning Arabic to please you, Ya Rab. Allah will say, okay, let's see what you did. And one of them shows the 99 and the other one shows the 20. What is more valuable to Allah on that day? Oh, that 20 is priceless. It is priceless. Because Allah is not scoring the number on the page. What is He scoring? The effort. And that 99 may be worth very, very, very little. Because He didn't have to make much effort to get it. He didn't have to make much effort. This is how Allah will judge. It's all about the quality, not about the quantity. People can only judge quantity. Allah will judge quality. Think about the quality of work you're doing, the quality of life you're living, the quality of the day you had. What time did you wake up for Fajr this morning? What kind of breakfast did you eat? Who did you talk to? How did you spend your time? What did you do? What was the quality of your day? Fix that and inshallah ta'ala this ummah has a bright future. Because once you start thinking about the ultimate truth and you start thinking about impact, there are going to be ideas that come out of this room. There are going, there's going to be creativity that comes out of this room. There are going to be projects that come out of this room that are going to change the world over. They will impact the world like it's never been impacted before. That is what the Muslim youth is capable of. That is what the young believer is capable of when they have the right pursuit. May Allah Azza wa make these people, these young people, the heroes of this ummah, the people of pursuit, that next generations come back and say, man, we want to beat them. They're the gold standard. Barakallahu wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.